picture perfect, you don't need no filter. Go just make them drop dead, you a killer. Shower you with all my attention. Yeah, these are my only intentions. Stay in the kitchen, cooking up, catch your own bread. Heart full of equity, or an asset. So tonight, we are going to be continuing a little series that we did during quarantine and all that fun stuff online. It's called I Have Questions, all right? So we did this series pretty much fully on YouTube because we were not meeting in person. But what this is, is that we looked at, on YouTube, we looked at four of some of the biggest questions that we have as Christ followers, okay? Things like, why do bad things happen to good people? Um, well, how do you read the Bible? Stuff like that. And, and it was a, we got a lot of good feedback because these were questions that are really, really, really tough to answer, okay? If you follow us on Instagram, about two weeks ago, we put a story that said, what are questions that you have about God, all right? We got a couple responses on this, some very, very good questions, but we're going to use one of those questions tonight to actually fuel this message, all right? And that question is really, really important. The question is, how do we love God, all right? And the person who submitted this question, I actually messaged them to ask what exactly they meant, and this is a huge question, the more that you dive into it. Because the thing is, is a lot of us, we realize and we process that God loves us. That's something that's just really easy to understand. We're like, okay, yeah, God loves us. He sent his son for us to die. Uh, he, gave, he gave us the Bible. He gave us church. He gave us relationships. God loves us. We get that. A lot of us are like, yeah, God is love. We know that verse. But the question is, how do we love God tonight? Because some of us are so overwhelmed by how much God loves us, and we think, okay, the creator of the universe loves us so much, an unexplainable amount. So how do I even begin to show him that I love him back? So this is a really important question, if you can't tell. Because maybe you've struggled with this, or maybe you haven't even realized that you've struggled with this question, but I think it's so important to figure out, okay, how do we love God? How do we show him that we, we care that he sent his son for us and that we want to live for him? How do we do that? How do we show him that, right? Because God is the creator of the universe. He's in heaven. We can't see him face to face. So how do we love him? So that's going to be where we're going tonight. And we hope that something about this message speaks to you and helps you understand your relationship with God a little bit more. Let's pray real quick before we get started. Father, we are so thankful for tonight. And I just pray over this message, Lord. I pray that everybody in this room can just realize that, Lord, you love us so much. And in order for us to properly have a relationship with you, we have to know how to love you back. So, Lord, I pray that something that is said tonight, something that is pulled from your word, speaks to our hearts and changes our lives so that we can figure out how to serve you and follow you better. Amen. All right. So, before we continue, I think we need to define what love is. All right. So, what is love? How would you define love if you had the chance? Real quick, we're going to define it the way that we would define it in our lives with other people, and we're going to compare that to what the Bible says about love, okay? The worldly definition of love is you loving somebody because they love you back, or you loving somebody because it's convenient, or you loving somebody because you've been in a relationship with them, or you've known them for a long time. The way that we love other people and our definition of love is based on what we get in return, okay? Even if we realize this or not. Think about your friends. Think about the people that you spend time with. Odds are, the reason why you love them, the reason why you hang out with them, the reason why you spend time with them is because they, do, they treat you, for the most part, good, right? They respect you, they make you laugh, and they make you feel loved. So our definition of love in this world is based on what we get in return. And that's okay, but that's just how we roll. And a lot of us can ask the question, okay, so who do I love? Or who should I love? And the Bible says that we should love everybody. But we have to first realize that our definition of love is not the way that Jesus defines love. It's a little bit different. Because our definition of love is, okay, I'm going to love this person because they did this for me. Or because I know them this way. Or because X, Y, Z, whatever you want to fill in that blank there. But our definition of love and the world definition of love is only love the people, only treat the people right who do it back to you. Right? The Bible says differently. Because the Bible says that we're supposed to love the way that Jesus loved. Right? You can read verses about this all day long. And one that we're going to read tonight is John 15, 12. And it says, this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. Okay? How did Jesus love us? How did God love us? They died on the cross for our sins. They sacrificed themselves 
for no apparent reason other than to love us and to show us that they love us. So what this means is if we're called to love that same way, it's not based on what the other person does for us. It's not based on what we're going to get in return for loving these people, but it's based on still doing it anyway. It's based on, okay, no matter who I cross paths with, with, no matter who I meet in my life or talk to in my life, I realize that they got created by the same God who created me, the same God who died on the cross for me, the same God who loves me, so I have to love them too. Because I'm called to love other people the same way that Christ loves other people. So in order to continue in this message, we first have to realize what love is. Because if we're going to say, okay, how do I love God? How do I serve God? How do I figure him out? We have to understand what love means. And, and I just, I hate to break it to you tonight, but the way that we typically handle love and deal with love and define love is not the way the Bible defines it. Because the Bible says that we're supposed to love like Jesus. Jesus did not love us and die on the cross for us so that we could do something in return. Right? But because we love him back, because we want to serve him, because we want to follow him, then we're compelled to follow him with our lives. We're compelled to lay our lives down, lay our hearts down, and serve him. Right? But it's not, Jesus didn't say, eh, I'm not really going to, I'm not going to do this because I, I don't know if they're going to love me back. I don't know if they're going to treat me the same way, so I'm just not going to do it. If we were on that cross or we were in that situation, we would say, okay, who am I dying for? Is it people that I love? Is it people that I'm close to? Is it people that I respect? Oh, it's strangers? <laughs> I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. But Jesus didn't act that way. Jesus died for every single person, and he died with just unconditional, absolutely unexplainable love. And if we're called to love that same way, we have to realize that it's different than the way that we love people in our lives. And so with those two definitions in mind, we're going to go a little bit further, further okay? So how did God love us? Right? We're figuring out now that there's a difference between what the Bible says about love and the, the standard that Christ set for loving other people. How did God love us? This is a verse that we've all heard before, but John 3.16. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. What this means is that God loved the world so much that he sent his only son, the perfect lamb of God, to come to this earth to live a perfect life and to die on the cross for you, for me, for everybody. So when we ask the question, okay, so how did God love us? Like, what does that mean? We hear that all the time. God loves you. God loves you. God is love. What does that mean? God sent his only son. God sent his desired precious lamb, Jesus, to die on the cross for you, regardless of how you're going to treat him going forward, or regardless how, if you're going to follow him or not, God still decided to do that. So God loved us that much. And so before we can say, okay, how do we love God? We have to understand how did God love us? And God loved us by sending his son to die for us. And the hope and the chance that we will follow him. On the hope and the chance that we will decide to have a relationship with him. We will decide to read the Bible and say, man, I'm going to live that way. And I'm going to have a relationship with him. And I'm going to live my life in accordance to what Jesus did on the cross. God sent his son on that chance. That's how much he loves you. Because let's face it. Nobody is forcing you into a relationship with Jesus. Nobody is forcing you to read the Bible or to know Jesus or to learn about him or to love him. Nobody's forcing that. So God sent his son to die on the cross because he loved you that much and it was based on a chance. It was based on you coming to a decision in your life where you decide to follow Jesus or you decide that you want a relationship with Jesus. That's crazy. Think about a relationship that you have in your life, a friendship or something like that. Odds are you're not going to do something drastic or something big for that person unless you can almost guarantee that you're going to get something in return because that's just the way that we work. But God did something this massive for all of humanity based on a chance, based on if you decide to follow him and have a relationship with him. That's just, that's mind-blowing, right? And so we're going to continue and say, okay, so God loved us that much. God loved us an unexplainable amount to the point that he sent his son that he loves to this earth to live a perfect life for 33 years and die. So how do I get to know this God? How do I start to love him back? How do I start to show him that I love him? Because that's a big deal, right? So we start to understand, okay, God loved us so much that he did that for us. How do we get to know him? How do we walk with him? How do we show that we love him? 
right? So if we want to get to know God, we have to understand and we have to read his word, all right? I don't know about you guys. I've gone to church almost my whole life. And for a long, long, long time, this Bible was just a book. This Bible was just a big book with some stories that were pretty cool and the life of Jesus and some teachings that I think are important, but that was pretty much it. But this verse tells us differently. Because this verse tells us that the word, the Bible, is God. Another verse says that all scripture is God-breathed. It's from the mouth, from the mind of God. And so if we want to get to know him, if we want to answer this question of how do we love God, how do we show that we want to follow him and we want to serve him, we have to know who God is. We can't just look at this book and say, yeah, it, it sits on my, my shelf, I have one, it's kind of dusty, I read it sometimes when I'm supposed to or I'm told to. But it mostly just sits there. I have an app where like a verse pops up every day and I sometimes look at it. It has to be more than that. Scripture says that by, like the Bible, reading God's word should be like food to us. It's something that we need. It's something that isn't just, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that sometimes. Or, oh, i got to check off the list that I read my Bible this week. But it's compared to food for us. So if we want to know who God is, how God loved us, how we can love him back, then we have to read the Bible. We have to put ourselves in the mindset of, okay, okay I want to know more. I want to learn more. I want to figure out who he is, why he would send his son in the first place, and what the Bible means to me. And by doing that, we have to read the Bible. And so if we want to know God better, if we want to understand who he is, and then in turn love him, then we have to read the Bible. We have to put ourselves in the position of wanting to read the Bible, not being forced to, not just because you feel like you should, but wanting to read the Bible, wanting to get stuff out of it. That is how we get to know God better. With that being said, we're going to move a little bit further, even deeper tonight. And so if the Word is God, and by reading the Word, by reading the Bible, we can understand how much God loves us, then we're left with the final question, okay? All right, I'm in a position now where I understand God loves us so much. He sent His Son to die for us. I understand that if I want to know who God is, if I want to figure him out a little bit, i got to read the Bible. But how do I show that I love him? How do I show that I want to serve him and I want to know him? And there's another interesting verse in John that's going to kind of put the icing on the cake tonight. John 14, 15. If you love me, obey my commands. Very straightforward. And one of the commandments in the Bible is to read the Bible. It's to love God. It's to love others. And so if we want to love God, if we want to answer this question, how do we love God? How do we serve him? How do we figure him out? We have to follow his commands. How do you figure out his commands? You read the Bible. It all goes back to this right here. Because if we want to know him, if we want to serve him, if we want to understand who he is, because let's face it, God is very confusing sometimes. That's why we're doing this series, I Have Questions, because every single person who has ever walked the earth has had questions about God. Parts of him and attributes of him and things that he does just confuse the heck out of us, right? And in order to figure him out, in order to gain a little bit more, more insight into who he is, why he loves us so much, and what he's done, we have to read the Bible. Because it says, if you love me, then obey my commands. And the Bible is full of God's commands. The Bible is full of how we should live if we believe in who God is and if we believe in who Jesus is. And then there's one more verse that I want to read tonight, and we're going to wrap this up. This one comes from Matthew, which is another book in the four Gospels of the Bible. Matthew 25, 40 says, And the king will say, I will tell you the truth. When you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Okay, what this means is, when we serve other people in our lives, or we are around other people in our lives, the things that we do to them, we are actually doing to God. Okay, and so if, you, if you're in a position where, man, I could have treated that person better, or man, I could have done something differently, you have to realize that when we are put in situations to make those decisions to serve somebody, or to help somebody out, or to be friends with somebody, or to encourage them, whatever it may look like, we have to realize that this verse says whatever we do to those people in our lives, the people that we're surrounded by, we're actually doing to God. So how do we love God? That's the ultimate question. That's the question we've been wrestling with tonight. How do we love God? If we love him, we obey his commands. How do we know his commands? We read the Bible. And from the Bible, we realize, wow, God loved us so much. He sent his son to die. 
And he gave us this book that is God-breathed. It says it's from the mouth of God, the Bible. And if we read that, then we're showing that we love him. And from reading it, we're going to realize, okay, we've got to serve other people. We've got to love other people. We've got to uh, be Christ-like in all that we do. And by doing that to everybody in our lives, then we're doing, we're doing it to God. We're showing God that we love him. And so let's take it back to the first point, the worldly definition of love. I'm going to love somebody because they're going to love me back. I'm going to do something for somebody because they're going to do it back to me. That doesn't really live up to the biblical standard of these things. Because God does not operate that way. God sent his son for you to die. God gave us this Bible for you, regardless of of how you decide to interpret that, how you decide to live with that, God still did it because he loves you that much. And so in our lives, when we say, okay, God, how do I love you? How do I love other people? This is so overwhelming. Obviously, I'm going to love my best friends. I'm going to love my family. I'm going to love the people that I'm around and that I know and that I trust. But Lord, how do I love everybody? How do I do, like, how do I even love you? If we love him, we obey his commands. And if we love him, than to the least of those in our lives, which means just everybody that you come in contact with, not just the people you like, not just the people that you're comfortable with, everybody. Whatever we do to them, we're doing to God. When we serve them, we're serving God. When we love them, we're loving God. When we are around them or encourage them, support them, we're doing that to God. And so this question is huge. This question is very big. How do we love God? God's just in the sky. No, I don't really want to read my Bible. I pray sometimes. Is that how I love God? I think that's vitally important. Prayer is our way to our communication line with God. And the Bible is God's words breathed onto pages. But what do we do with that? We take it into our lives. We take it into our relationships, regardless if that's on a sports team, if that's at school, if that's in your house, if that's wherever. We say, man, these people that I'm around, even if they push my buttons and they drive me crazy, these people that I'm around... When I love them, when I serve them, when I treat them right, I'm actually doing that to God. When I decide to put myself last and to serve them, regardless of what they do back to me, regardless of their reaction, regardless of if it makes me look good or not, when I do that, I'm actually serving God. And when I read the Bible, it's not just words on a page. It's not just, all right, read my Bible for this week, but this is God speaking to us. This is God's words on a page. And then I'm like, wow. How do I love him? I follow his commands. I want to read the Bible. I want to be invested in it. The, the Bible is how I figure out how to serve him, how to love him better. And so tonight, that was the question. How do we love God? And I think this is something that maybe a lot of us have never considered before. We know how to love other people for the most part. We've, we talk about that all the time in church, how you love others. But we've never really sat back and said, man, how do we love God? How do we love the creator of the universe? That's massive. That's that's overwhelming. But hopefully, tonight spoke a little bit of truth into that. Because the way that we love God is by loving other people. The way that we love God is by serving other people and by reading his word and by reading his commands, regardless of what those people that we're in relationship with are going to do back to us. Because we've got to stop living that way. We're called to be like Christ in all that we do. Which means when we're in those relationships with those people that we don't like, I know we all have them. Some of you, an immediate name jumped to your head. That person you're thinking of, even that person deserves your love. Even that person deserves to, you know, for you to hold the door for them or for you to help them if they're, if they're in need. That person deserves it too. Because Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these, you're actually doing to me. And so as we head out this week, that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. I want you to think of that person or that group of people that just drives you crazy. We all have them. The people in your life that you can't stand or you don't want to be around, you definitely would not consider them your friends. And I want you to start to think this way. I want you to start to think, wow, when I'm rude to them or I gossip about them or I talk bad about them, the Bible says I'm doing that to God. The Bible says whatever I do to them Whatever my heart is towards them, that's to God. Ouch. That hurts, right? So we have to start to realize that if we want to love God, we've got to love others. If we want to love God, we've got to love the Bible. We've got to read the Bible. We've got to figure out how we're supposed to love others and how we're supposed to love God. That's why we have it. It's God's words. So I want you to think of those people this week. I want you to focus on those people or that group of people. 
And I want you to start to think, okay, am I just treating them bad? Or am I treating God bad? Because God doesn't say, love everybody. Treat everybody the way that Christ did, except for those people you don't like. Jesus didn't die on the cross and said, man, I give my life for everybody except for them. Because I don't really like them that much. Jesus didn't do that. And if we're called to be like Christ, then we can't do that. So how do we love God? We love others. How do we love God? We follow his commands. And, by, and his commands are the Bible. By learning his commands, by figuring out what we're supposed to do, we have to read the Bible. So that is all we have for you guys tonight. I'm going to pray real quick, and then you guys will be dismissed to hang out outside. Like I said, if you want to stay later than 8, that is totally okay. But the rest of the night is going to be a little bit more of a hangout time for you guys. But let's pray real quick before we head out. Father, this question that we just dealt with tonight is very, very, very important. Lord, we can understand all day long that you loved us. But Lord, we have to understand how we can love you back. And Lord, I pray that... The verses that we read from your word, Lord, the verses from the book of John just spoke to our life, Lord, because we can see that in order to love you, in order to serve you, in order to follow you, we have to act that way around other people, even the people that we don't like. Lord, if we love you, then we are putting ourselves in the position of following your commandments. Lord, if we love you, then we are putting ourselves in the position of learning your commandments through the Bible. So, Lord, I pray that tonight, something that was said, something that we discussed, Lord, just speaks to our lives and helps us change our perspective on the people that we don't like and the people that we do like. Because love is not based on other people's reaction. Love is not based on what we're going to get back. But, Lord, ultimately, love is based on sacrifice. And, Lord, love is based on you. We're thankful for tonight. I pray that we can all come back next week. Amen. Love, got your own bread, heart full of equity, you're an asset.